The Auditor General provides assurance to Parliament on the accountability and performance of the Victorian public sector. The Auditor General conducts financial audits and performance audits and reports on the results of these audits to Parliament. On 28th of May 2015, the Auditor General tabled his performance audit report, Victoria's Consumer Protection Framework for Building Construction. Building or renovating a house is usually the single biggest investment in an individual's lifetime. And while not everyone experiences problems, a significant number do. Serious problems with building regulation in Victoria have previously been identified in a series of reviews, including two reports issued by Vargo in 2000 and 2011. This audit found the existing framework still does not adequately protect consumers and urgent reform is needed. The current consumer protection framework for building construction is complex. As this slide shows, the system comprises multiple agencies with various responsibilities. The audit assessed whether key elements of the current domestic building consumer protection framework are effectively managed, including whether the Victorian Building Authority, or VBA, the Building Practitioners Board, or BPB, and Consumer Affairs Victoria, or CAV, are performing existing functions and powers effectively, the Victorian Managed Insurance Authorities, or VMIA's, provision of domestic building insurance, or DBI, is effectively and economically managed, and whether the recommendations from Vargo's 2011 Compliance with Building Permits audit have been addressed. The Practitioner Registration System is managed by the BPB and aims to assess competence, business acumen, character and work history. Registration is permanent once granted, subject to the payment of an annual fee and insurance premium. There is no requirement for practitioners to demonstrate their ongoing competency. Our audit found deficiencies in the standards and process for assessing applications. The registration system does not provide consumers assurance all registered builders are competent, qualified and of good character. Building surveyors play a crucial role in building regulation. They issue building permits and conduct stage inspections to ensure homes are built to minimum standards. However, this important role is undermined by a conflict of interest that arises because surveyors are typically engaged by builders rather than owners, and they are therefore reliant on builders for ongoing work. This limits the surveyor's independence to challenge non-compliant work. VBA has recently begun risk-based performance audit and field compliance programs, but it can't yet tell if they are effective because it does not have an evaluation framework in place. Monitoring and compliance does not provide consumers assurance surveyors are acting in consumers' best interests and that problems will be promptly discovered and addressed. BPB is responsible for disciplining building practitioners and can order an inquiry into a registered building practitioner's conduct or ability to practice. It maintains a disciplinary register on the VBA's website that should enable consumers to check the record of practitioners. However, the register is not prominent. Building surveyors are overrepresented in misconduct inquiries and findings. Between January 2009 and December 2013, nearly 10% of building surveyors appeared before the BPB, with all found guilty of at least one offence. The effectiveness of current sanctions is questionable. Over 27% of offending surveyors appeared at disciplinary inquiries more than once within the same year. Consumers cannot have confidence that they are protected from misconduct and that practitioners will be appropriately sanctioned when they offend. This slide shows the various pathways that consumers and builders can follow when seeking to resolve their disputes. While CAV receives most complaints about domestic building, consumers also go to their local council and BPB. CAV assesses complaints and will not attempt conciliation unless it believes there is a reasonable likelihood of resolution. It reports a resolution rate from its dispute conciliation services of 68%, but its definition of resolve did not necessarily mean that parties to the conciliation are satisfied. CAV only accepts a complaint for conciliation if both parties agree to participate. Conciliation is not mandatory. Any agreed outcomes, such as building repairs or payments, are unenforceable. CAV has repeatedly advised government on the limited protection afforded to consumers by voluntary conciliation and advised making conciliation mandatory with enforceable outcomes. Critically, CAV does not follow up or monitor actions agreed by parties during conciliation, so the ultimate outcomes are not known. 
If consumers aren't satisfied by the outcomes achieved in the conciliation process, they can go to VCAT, which may be time-consuming and costly. Consumers cannot rely on dispute resolution to provide a satisfactory, timely and cost-effective outcome. DBI is mandatory for builders when undertaking domestic building works over $16,000 and eligibility is a requirement for registration. DBI is last resort and only available when a builder fails to complete works and has died, disappeared or become insolvent within six years of completion. DBI is widely misunderstood by consumers who may not be aware of the limited payouts and triggers. Government intervened in 2010 directing VMIA to provide DBI when private insurers exited the market. The delivery model for DBI includes an agent and brokers, even though there is only one insurance provider. This means that the model is significantly more costly than if it did not include intermediaries, and has cost consumers an estimated additional $21.6 million over the past four years. DTF and VMIA need to provide comprehensive advice to government on opportunities to improve the cost effectiveness and consumer protection offered by DBI. The following two slides include a series of recommendations that focus on the key areas requiring improvement. Addressing these recommendations will go a long way to providing an appropriate level of consumer protection and tackling the well-acknowledged gaps and issues in the current framework. Agencies involved in the audit have all accepted the recommendations and outlined actions they will undertake to address them. This slide highlights the key messages from the audit. Key aspects of the existing framework need to be improved. There is a need to urgently reform the existing framework and tackle known gaps to adequately protect consumers. Previous relevant audits are shown on this slide. All our reports are available on our website. If you have any questions about this or other reports, or if you have anything else you would like to discuss with us, including ideas for future audit topics, please call us on 03 8601 7000 or contact us via our website.